like to tell you about the strangest secret in the world. Strangest in the world. Some years ago, the late Nobel Prize winning Dr. Albert Schweitzer was being interviewed in London, and a reporter asked him, Doctor, what's wrong with men today? And the great doctor was silent a moment, and then he said, Men simply don't think. It's about this that I want to talk with you. We live today in a golden age. This is an era that man has looked forward to, dreamed of, and worked toward for thousands of years. But since it's here, we pretty well take it for granted. We in America are particularly fortunate to live in the richest land that ever existed on the face of the earth. A land of abundant opportunity for everyone. But you know what happens? Well, let's take a hundred men who start even at the age of 25. Do you have any idea what will happen to those men by the time they're 65? These 100 men who all start even at the age of 25 believe they're going to be successful. If you ask any one of these men if he wanted to be a success, he'd tell you he did. And you'd notice that he was eager toward life, that there was a certain sparkle in his eye, an erectness to his carriage, and life seemed like a pretty interesting adventure to him. But by the time they're 65, one will be rich. Four will be financially independent. Five will still be working. Fifty-four will be broke. Now think a moment, out of the 100, only five make the grade. Now why do so many fail? What has happened to the sparkle that was there when they were 25? What's become of the dreams, the hopes, the plans? And why is there such a large disparity between what these men intended to do and what they actually accomplished? When we say about 5% achieve success, we have to define success. And here's the best definition I've ever been able to find. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If a man is working toward a predetermined goal and knows where he's going, that man is a success. If he's not doing that, he's a failure. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Rollo May, the distinguished psychiatrist, wrote a wonderful book called Man's Search for Himself. And in this book he says, the opposite of courage in our society is not cowardice. It is conformity. And there you have the trouble today. It's conformity. People acting like everyone else without knowing why, without knowing where they're going. Now think of it. In America right now, there are over 18 million people, 65 years of age and older. And most of them are broke. They're dependent on someone else for life's necessities. Now we learn to read by the time we're seven. We learn to make a living by the time we're 25. Usually by that time, we're not only making a living, we're supporting a family. And yet by the time we're 65, we haven't learned how to become financially independent in the richest land that has ever been known. Why? We conform. And the trouble is that we're acting like the wrong percentage group, the 95 who don't succeed. Now why do these people conform? Well, they really don't know. These people believe that their lives are shaped by circumstances, by things that happen to them, by exterior forces. They're outer-directed people. A survey was made one time that covered a lot of men, working men, and these men were asked, Why do you work? Why do you get up in the morning? Nineteen out of twenty had no idea. If you ask them, they'll say, Well, everyone goes to work in the morning, and that's the reason they do it, because everyone else is doing it. Now, let's get back to our definition of success. Who succeeds? The only person who succeeds is the person who is progressively realizing a worthy ideal. He's the person who says, I'm going to become this, and then begins to work toward that goal. And I'll tell you who the successful people are. A success is the school teacher who's teaching school because that's what he or she wants to do. The success is the woman who's a wife and mother because she wanted to become a wife and mother and is doing a good job of it. The success is the man who runs the corner gas station because that was his dream, that's what he wanted to do. The success is the successful salesman who wants to become a top-notch salesman and grow and build his organization. A success is anyone who is doing deliberately a predetermined job because that's what he decided to do deliberately. But only one out of twenty does that. That's why today there isn't really any competition unless we make it for ourselves. Instead of competing, all we have to do is create. You know, for 20 years I looked for the key which would determine what would happen to a human being. Was there a key I wanted to know which would make the future a promise that we could foretell to a large extent? Was there a key that would guarantee a person's becoming successful if he only knew about it and knew how to use it? Well, there is such a key, and I found it. Have you ever wondered why so many men work so hard and honestly without ever achieving anything in particular? And others don't seem to work hard and yet seem to get everything? They seem to have the magic touch. You've heard them say that about someone. Everything he touches turns.
turns to gold. Have you ever noticed that a man who becomes successful tends to continue to become successful? And on the other hand, have you noticed how a man who's a failure tends to continue to fail? Well, it's because of goals. Some of us have goals, some don't. People with goals succeed because they know where they're going. It's that simple. Think of a ship leaving a harbor, and think of it with a complete voyage mapped out and planned. The captain and crew know exactly where it's going and how long it'll take. It has a definite goal. And 9,999 times out of 10,000, it will get to where it started out to get. Now let's take another ship, just like the first, only let's not put a crew on it or a captain at the helm. Let's give it no aiming point, no goal, no destination. We just start the engines and let it go. I think you'll agree with me that if it gets out of the harbor at all, it'll either sink or wind up on some deserted beach of derelict. It can't go any place because it has no destination and no guidance, and it's the same with a human being. Take the salesman, for example. There's no other person in the world today with a future of a good salesman. Selling is the world's highest paid profession, if we're good at it and if we know where we're going. Every company needs top-notch salesmen, and they reward those men. The sky's the limit for them. But how many can you find? Someone once said the human race is fixed, not to prevent the strong from winning, but to prevent the weak from losing. The American economy today can be likened to a convoy in time of war. The entire economy is slowed down to predict its weakest link, just as the convoy had to go up to speed that would permit the slowest vessel to remain in formation. That's why it's so easy to make a living today. It takes no particular brains or talent to make a living and support a family today. So we have a plateau of so-called security, and that's what a person's looking for. But we do have to decide how high above this plateau we want to wait. Now let's get back to the strangest secret in the world, the story that I wanted to tell you today. Why do men with goals succeed in life and men without them fail? Well, let me tell you something which, if you really understand it, will alter your life immediately. If you understand completely what I'm going to tell you from this moment on, your life will never be the same again. You will suddenly find that good luck just seems to be attracted to you. The things you want just seem to fall in line, and from now on you won't have the problems, the worries, the gnawing lump of anxiety that perhaps you've experienced before. Doubt, fear, well, there'll be things of the past. Here's the key to success, and the key to failure. We become what we think about. Now let me say that again. We become what we think about. Throughout all history, the great wise men and teachers, philosophers and prophets have disagreed with one another on many different things. It's only on this one point that they are in complete and unanimous agreement. Listen to what Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman emperor, said. A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. The Israeli said this. Everything comes if a man will only wait. I brought myself by long meditation to the conviction that a human being with a settled purpose must accomplish it, and that nothing can resist a will that will stake even existence for its fulfillment. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, A man is what he thinks about all day long. William James said, The greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. And he also said, we need only in cold blood act as if the thing in question were real and it will become infallibly real by growing into such a connection with our life that it will become real. It will become so knit with habit and emotion that our interests in it will be those which characterize belief. And he also said, if you only care enough for a result, you will almost certainly attain it. If you wish to be rich, you will be rich. If you wish to be learned, you will be learned. If you wish to be good, you will be good. Only you must then really wish these things and wish them exclusively, and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. In the Bible you read in Mark 9:23, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. My old friend Dr. Norman Vincent Peale put it this way. This is one of the greatest laws in the universe. Fervently do I wish I had discovered it as a very young man. It dawned upon me much later in life, and I found it to be one of the greatest, if not my greatest discovery outside of my relationship to God. The great law, briefly and simply stated, is that if you think in negative terms, you will get negative results. If you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. That is a simple fact, he went on to say, which is at the basis of an astonishing law of prosperity and success. In three words, believe and succeed. William Shakespeare put it this way, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the 
get out of bed in the morning. He should be doing a job he likes to do because he does it well. One time I heard Grove Patterson, the great late editor-in-chief of the Toledo Daily Blade, make a speech. And as he concluded his speech, he said something I've never forgotten. He said, my years in the newspaper business have convinced me of several things. Among them, that people are basically good and that we came from someplace and we're going someplace. So we should make our time here an exciting adventure. The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. And the greatest teacher of all, the carpenter from the plains of Galilee, gave us the secret time and time again. As you believe, so shall it be done unto you. I've explained the strangest secret in the world and how it works. On this side, I want to explain how you can prove to yourself the enormous returns possible in your own life by putting your secret to a practical test. I want you to make a test in the last 30 days. It isn't going to be easy, but if you'll give it a good try, it will completely change your life for the better. Back in the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton, the English mathematician and natural philosopher, gave us the natural laws of physics, which apply as much to human beings as they do to the movement of bodies in the universe. And one of these laws is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Simply stated, as it applies to you and me, it means we can achieve nothing without paying the price. The results of your 30-day experiment will be in direct proportion to the effort you put forth. To be a doctor, you must pay the price in long years of difficult study. To be successful in selling, and remember that each of us succeeds to the extent of his ability to sell. Selling our families and our ideas, selling education in schools, selling our children on the advantage of living a good and honest life, selling our associates and employees on the importance of being exceptional people, to, of course, the profession of selling itself. But to be successful in selling our way to the good life, we must be willing to pay the price. And what is that price? Well, it's many things. First, it's understanding emotionally as well as intellectually that we will literally become what we think about, that we must control our thoughts in order to control our lives. It's understanding fully that as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Second, it's cutting away all fetters from the mind and permitting it to soar as it was divinely designed to do. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. It's rising above narrow-minded pettiness and prejudice. And third, it's using all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem, to set a definite and clearly defined goal for yourself, to let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles, to let your imagination speculate freely upon many different possible solutions, to refuse to believe that there are any circumstances sufficiently strong to defeat you in the accomplishment of your purpose, to act promptly and decisively when your course is clear, and to keep constantly aware of the fact that you are at this moment standing in the middle of your own acres of diamonds, as Russell Conwell used to point out. And fourth, save at least 10% of every dollar you earn. It's also remembering that no matter what your present job, it has enormous possibilities if you're willing to pay the price. Now let's just one of the important points in the price each of us must pay to achieve the wonderful life that can be ours. It is, of course, worth any price. One, you will become what you think about. Two, remember the word imagination and let your mind begin to soar. Three, courage. Concentrate on your goal every day. Four, save 10% of what you earn. And five, five action. Ideas are worthless unless we tempt on them. Now I'll try to outline the 30-day test I want you to make. Keep in mind that you have nothing to lose by making this test of everything you could possibly want to gain. There are two things that may be said of everyone. Each of us wants something, and each of us is afraid of something. I want you to write on a card what it is you want more than anything else. It may be more money, but I should like to double your income or make a specific amount of money. It may be a beautiful home. It may be success at your job. It may be a particular position in life. It could be a more harmonious family. Each of us wants something. Now write down on your card specifically what it is you want. Make sure it's a single goal and clearly defined. You need to show it to anyone, but carry it with you so that you can look at it several times a day. Think about it in a cheerful, relaxed, positive way each morning when you get up. And immediately you have something to work for, something to get out of bed for, something to live for. Look at it every chance you get during your day just before going to bed at night. And as you look at it, remember that you must become what you think about. And since you're thinking about your goal, you realize that soon it will be yours. In fact, it's yours really. The moment you write it down and begin to think about it. Look at the abundance all around you as you go about your daily business. You have as much right to this abundance as any other living creature. It's yours for the asking. Now we come to the difficult part. Difficult because it 